Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And in today's honestly pretty brutal job market, I wanted to make a video for any of you out there that might be considering interviewing for a data engineering role and help give you some advice on how you can prepare, what kind of questions you might be asked, and some projects and things you can work on to help yourself stand out from the pack when it comes time to actually get in the room and interview. So you're gonna walk in there as prepared as you possibly can be. And spoiler alert, I'm not gonna recommend you take a bunch of data engineering boot camps. Those are honestly sometimes a waste of money in my case. These are all practical, low cost to no cost mainly, as ways that you can really up-level yourself in the eyes of a data engineering interviewer uh, and be the best interviewee you can possibly be. Um, so without further ado, Let's get into it. Let's start with some of the things you can do uh, to really help expect, things you can expect to occur during the interview topics that are gonna be covered and how you can prepare for them. So the first thing that I think everyone should do when preparing for a data engineering interview and something that will 1000% come up, there's just no way it possibly can't, uh, is understand all the different key concepts involved in data engineering. So things like database systems, the differences between SQL, NoSQL, what might be best for which use case. So when you might want to use a Mongo non-relational database over a PostgreSQL relational database. Um, understand database design, how you can optimize indexing, um, and then what best is what database is best suited for which use case. Then also data warehousing. Be familiar with OLTP versus OLAP data warehouses, STAR and Snowflake schemas, uh, and also tools like Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery, Snowflake, all the big, most commonly used tools you're going to want to be very, very familiar with. Other things you'll want to be well-versed in is what tools you're using to actually build those data pipelines. So know how to build pipelines in Apache Airflow, know how to you know, use Kafka for streaming, monitor Kafka topics, Spark for processing, really understand each part of that uh, data processing life cycle. And speaking of processing, know and can be able to talk about the differences between ETL and ELT processes. So understanding you know, how to extract data from different sources, the steps involved in transforming it, how to do that efficiently, uh, the services you're gonna use to do that efficiently and loading them into a target system, and then also when you're gonna wanna use ETL over ELT. Additionally here, and kind of conjoined with all of this, is understand different big data ecosystem technologies. So like I said, Airflow, Spark, Kafka, Flink, all open source, you can spin them all up on your own laptop, get experience with them. You don't need to have you know, a, an expensive cloud bill to get started learning, build projects with them, host them on GitHub, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, and then also master cloud services. Understand how to use tools like AWS, GCP, Azure, your, your flavor, choose your cloud of choice. Um, and then understand you know, for AWS, S3, Glue, EMR, Lambda, uh, all the major services that people use on AWS, do some job searches for jobs you, you are interested in, and companies you're interested in. Typically they'll say what cloud services they're looking for experience in, learn how those cloud services work. Um, and then also, you know, GCP, big, knowing how to use BigQuery, Azure, knowing how to use Azure Data Lake, Databricks. Um, all those are really important to showing a potential employer that, hey, you're up to date with the latest in this uh, space and that you're gonna bring best practices and really good mind share to your team. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is getting a solid understanding and also mastery of a few different data pipelining technical skills. So you're gonna to need to know pretty advanced SQL and Python no matter what, but also think, hey, do I want to learn Ruby? Do I want to learn Java so I can do more kind of the front end things? Look at the types of data engineers you wanna be, the types of technologies you wanna work with and invest in learning those. Obviously though, when you're thinking about that, make sure that those skills are actually going to be relevant. Python, becoming a Python wizard is never going to be a bad skill because especially with ML and AI, it's got a really rich ecosystem of things you can go deep in and almost every company is going to have some kind of need for it. Um, and then also it's an easy one to get started with showcase building coding skills, uh, showcasing projects you built in Python, how to handle ETL jobs, data manipulation, automation, 
And then a lot of these other services like Spark, like Airflow, like Kafka, you can script those within Python. So if you have a really good understanding of how Python works, those skills are super transferable to a lot of these specific tools that you're going to be using. Additionally, you're going to you know, want to know what these tools are, so data, different data warehouses, have an understanding of how to interact with them, you know, how to efficiently manage them. Think about data modeling. Understand and watch my video on how to design scalable and efficient data models for both transactional and analytical use cases, so designing for really high readability or really high writability. Um, and then also layering into all of this, build these projects with things like Git for version control, show how you can build a CI CD pipeline, and also that gets you experienced with working with most companies' software development lifecycle practices where they're gonna use some kind of version control, you're gonna have to work with a CI CD pipeline, and knowing and understanding how to do that efficiently is really important. Um, and then of course, be familiar with different types of data formats, You know when to use vector data, when you want to use Avro, there's a lot of data formats out there. Obviously, most stuff is gonna be pretty basic, but there are some use cases where choosing the right data format can make a world of difference. So understand the differences between them, have that high level understanding, uh, and just in case you get a gotcha question, I, I find that that's really useful information as well. Another skill that's really crucial to have is the ability to have skills in problem solving and system design. So a common question is going to be, hey, design a data architecture that can handle large data ingestion and storage, uh, ensure high availability and scalability, and they'll ask you to sketch that out or describe what you imagine that might entail. Um, and so being able to have these skills on the fly to think, all right, here's a business problem. This is the technical architecture I would need to serve that business problem, because that is really the core of your job as a data engineer. And then also alongside of that, think about, hey, how would you be debug this pipeline? What, would you, what steps would you take to troubleshoot a broken pipeline or an incorrect data load or maybe a bottleneck in that pipeline? Uh, and then also on the flip side of that, a side of debugging is, is proactive optimization. Talk about how you would proactively optimize data processes, you know, maybe reduce costs from working with cloud resources or processing large data sets to make sure that you know, you're coming across as someone who is, you know, has their eye on the prize. Um, which is better and more efficient data processing. And then some kind of hands-on ways you can approach this is have some personal projects, build and showcase data pipelines using open source tools or cloud services in your portfolio. So like a real-time streaming pipeline using Kafka. Um, and then also, while I said don't take data boot camps, some relevant certifications, some free certifications can be helpful. They're not gonna make a world of difference, but something like a basic cloud certification does carry at least a small amount of weight that at least you know how to work with that cloud. Um, but again, don't really want to rely on those too much. Um, and those are just kind of, those are really all I have for general ideas and things that you'll want to study and prepare and, and work on uh, to be well positioned to land a job. But now I also want to talk about what are some potential questions you could be asked on a data engineering interview? So in terms of data engineering questions, there's kind of four main categories. So you're going to have SQL questions, um, database design questions, data pipelines and ETL design, um, and also big data ecosystem questions. So under the SQL questions, the kind of general format is gonna be, hey, write me a query or explain the differences in why different queries will be most efficient. So one example would be write a query to find the second highest salary from an employee table. Um, in which case, hey, what is the second highest salary? Um, and writing that query efficiently to use the least amount of compute power to give you that response. Another one could be explain the difference between an inner left and right join and provide an example of each. So in this, you're gonna wanna explain, hey, what, how do these differ in how they join the data sets? How would two different data sets look differently if they were inner, outer, or uh, right, or sorry, inner, right, or left uh, joined? And then also, having good examples of those, so being able to quickly sketch out and explain the differences between them. Um, and then third example I have here is, given a large data set, how would you optimize a SQL query to reduce execution time? And so this is where you can actually get tripped up a lot by thinking, oh, I need to go super complex, I need to make sure yeah, you know, I'm using all these crazy things. You just really wanna think about what is the most efficient, clean, simple way to accomplish this at a low cost. You don't want to get lost in the weeds of introducing unnecessary complexity because this is, you know, your test of, hey, are they thinking like a business person? How do I get this outcome? Or are they going to get mired in technical weeds when trying to solve problems? 
Now, for something like a database design question, that's where you're gonna be asked things like, hey, can you explain or design a schema for a social media platform's data warehouse that tracks user interactions? So things like likes, shares, comments. So here, you're gonna to wanna to talk about, hey, what would be an efficient way to store this? What kind of primary foreign keys would you use? What kind of schema would you use, star or snowflake? And here, you wanna really tailor that schema to the particular use case. So in this case, user transaction data, that's going to be a write-heavy database, but hopefully, or maybe not, a read-heavy database. Maybe it's just a record store. Um, and in that case, you wanna design it like a transactional database, just saying, hey, track all these user interactions that are coming in a very standardized format. Um, another question could be explain normalization and denormalization in database design. When would you use each approach? And here, you're going to want to talk about the benefits of using normalized data or denormalized data, what use cases are you know, each is best appropriate for, um, and then talk about why you would use each in that use case. The key is there that why. That's what they want to hear is how does your brain work in these situations? And that's really the most important thing. Now, under data pipelines and ETL, those kind of questions, first you're gonna have questions that are like, hey, how do you, would you design an ETL pipeline that's gonna pull data from an API, then store it in a data warehouse, and then how are you gonna handle those errors? And here it's about, hey, not only design the pipeline and you know, talking about what uh, solutions you're gonna use, but also thinking about your kind of error handling logic, which is the more complex piece about it. You know, how would you automate that? Or how would you do notifications on that? So designing, you know, past just a simple ETL pipeline and actually accounting for certain system conditions. And then another one that, that is popular is how are you gonna ensure the scalability and reliability of data pipelines as your data grows in size? Um, and so here, obviously they want to understand, you know, are you enterprise ready? Are you thinking about the kind of things that an enterprise data engineer would be thinking about, you know, maintaining these data pipelines, not just in the short term, but in the long haul for years and years to come. Next, is questions around big data ecosystems. So here you're gonna get questions that are like, hey, what's the difference between stream versus batch processing? When would you want to use something like Apache Spark versus Apache Flink? And this is really like honestly a simple question at the end of the day, like Apache Spark is very is batch processing, Apache Flink is stream processing. So each one correlates to the other. But if you're not familiar with big data ecosystems and all the, what all these tools do, you might not have that answer on the top of your head. Um, and then kind of compounding on that is something like explaining the role of Kafka in data engineering architecture. So this is where they're probably gonna ask you on a system that's really crucial to their business and understand, hey, how do you think it should be used? And does that align with how we use it? Does that align with their understanding of, you know, hey, what this tool can be used for and where does it fit in? So this is as much of a technical check as kind of a compatibility check with how you think about certain big data tools. Next, you're gonna have a category that really kind of encompasses you know, more behavioral and scenario-based questions where they're trying to assess how are you gonna work in the type of environment that this company offers. Um, and also understand just kind of your, how your mindset works when approaching a problem. Um, so a common question you'll have here is, you know, describe a time when you had to debug a failing data pipeline. How did you identify that issue? What steps did you take to resolve it? What was your workflow look like? You know, how did you identify the issue? How did you go about rectifying it? Um, and just thinking and understanding, hey, how does this person work? Um, is that compatible with how we work on this team? And then a more general and important question is, you know, how do you prioritize tasks when you're managing multi multiple pipelines and stakeholders? And this is really a test of, hey, how efficient are you at working in a large business where you're gonna be pulled in a lot of different directions, data engineers especially, you know, there's a lot of asks on the data team. And so being able to properly triage and then assess, hey, this is what the priority is right now, is really crucial to being an effective data engineer in an organization where, you know, it's just gonna be super fast paced. Now, the final category of questions I wanna talk about are system design questions. And so here you're gonna look at things like, hey, how would you design a data ingestion system to pull millions of records daily from multiple sources and then store it for analysis? Or design a real-time processing system to track user activity on a website. Which tools would you use? How would you scale that system? And both of these questions are designed to test your knowledge of you know, the entire network, the entire data engineering stack. And this, you have to understand how different tools fit together, which tool is used for which step. It's not just a monolithic question of what is Spark used for. This is really testing your knowledge of how can you efficiently use a combination of tools together to deliver an effective end result. 
And then also, you know, questions like how would you scale the system? How are you going to do this at really large scale for millions of records from multiple sources? What practices are you going to put in place to make sure that those pipelines are successful? So this is a really crucial question, especially if you're going to be the data engineer in a smaller company where you're going to need to build a lot of stuff from scratch. This is the kind of question they're going to ask you. So now we've gone through some questions, some general things you'll want to understand, high level concepts. I want to end this video with some really concrete tips for how you can stand out. And really the first and most effective thing you can do to stand out is building real projects. Create a portfolio of GitHub repos that showcase how you can leverage your data engineering skills for real world use cases. Think of real world use cases, build projects for them, just like you would in your real job. Design effective data models for them. And then also this has the effect of giving you things to talk about in your job interview. You can reference the things you've created and if you were driving that entire project, that gives you a lot more credibility and also just you're gonna have all that nitty gritty detail knowledge because you're gonna build it all. And a lot of people get hung up, I think, on like data engineering projects have to be super complex or you know, it doesn't need to be. It can be a super tightly focused project doesn't need to cost really anything either. You can, in, in this example, everything other than Amazon S3, which you could substitute for the file system on your computer, is open source. So you can download all this stuff on your machine, run it all on your machine. It might be difficult, you might want to bring in some VMs, but everything can be done locally. You can use publicly available data like a Reddit API, build a project that processes it, and like that's how I've gotten in the door at a lot of interviews is, hey, do you know how to build these projects? Can you talk, talk to us about this? Can you show me something that is cool? And if it's a cool project that you think is interesting, that's a, probably a good thing to talk about in an interview because data engineering leaders are nerds too. They wanna hear about what you did on your nerd project. Like that is super cool to them. So don't get to be afraid to make it fun and have it be about something that's interesting to you. Um, so and just really make sure that, you know, you're building these that and then making them available and just having something to talk about. Um, and then kind of compounding that is share those contributions. If you've contributed to, you know, maybe an open source data engineering project, if you're an Airflow contributor, write about that, write blogs, tutorials, bring that on your LinkedIn page, set links to where you've written those blogs, those tutorials. Um, and then the other soft skills I would say to have, or, you know, only other kind of takeaway and like tips for standing out is demonstrating those problem solving abilities. So I kind of talked about that with, with uh, questions, but focus on scenarios and you know maybe this is a good example of something you can do within a project is start a project at a really rough state and then think about how you can optimize that how you can implement debugging how you can do process improvement because that's going to be really effective in showing your employer hey you know they're not only throwing together science projects they're solving real world problems they know how to optimize they know how to do things like scale these out um, and just really make those projects more real in their eyes and then Finally, is just make sure you have effective communication skills. You know, this is difficult, but and it's sometimes overlooked by data engineers because they think, oh, you know, I just need to be super technically competent. It's not true. Being able to explain complex technical concepts to non-technical stakeholders is crucial in the data engineering world. So being able to demonstrate you've worked with cross-functional teams like data scientists or product managers and talking about when you've worked with other people is really crucial because no one wants like the smelly weirdo that's going to come to the office and sit in the closet and you know just pump out code all day you need someone to work with because that's the only way you're going to be effective within a business um, but that is all i have for today i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you have a great rest of your day data guy out peace